ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, our dear friend Greg Kelly, the most miserable man on the internet, um, sat uh, sat down with his hero, this guy, um, uh, who I, I have to say is looking more. Trump is looking more and more like Pat Robertson's nutsack these days, and it, and sounding a lot more like Pat. Um, it's almost disturbing. Now, Glenn loves, 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 loves him. Some Donald Trump. This is, you know how they say, don't meet your heroes? This might be the don't meet your heroes moment for Glenn Beck. Um, I don't know if this is the first one. I have two of them. We'll see if it starts. It doesn't quite matter. Like like the order of questions and this, <laughs> the, the you know. The intro, the middle, and the end actually uh, in an interview actually has any fucking meaning with Trump when it's just scattered and crazy. Anyways, and he repeats the same shit to different questions. Anyways, I, I, it doesn't matter. But at the hearing, he's been invited. Okay, so that, that seems like he's in the middle of something. Let's see. Victor Orban. Uh nope. Okay, he's just, they're just pulling out clips of it. So that tells me, Greg, who's looking a little bloated, maybe a little tired. It must have been a big travel day. He's flying in from San Diego or wherever he does his show from. And uh, uh, let's see. Let's, let's, I'll, we'll just jump in. Trump talks latest investigations into Hunter Biden. Oh, you mean the, the dying, vain attempt? He needs Pat's hair. Right. Hunter Biden is saying he's not going to go to the hearing he's been invited to. And look, he's you give him a hard time. To. And he deserves a hard time. But I am. Imagine you ran into Hunter Biden's. Why does he deserve a hard time? Say here in Palm Beach, for some reason, some crazy coincidence, and why uh, Hunter Biden was never at Jeffrey Epstein's house, and Jeffrey Epstein's never been to Hunter Biden's house. Fact. And you weren't talking. Ah, they'll save every one of us. In politics, I know that you know about addiction from your brother Fred. Right, You've spoken right, about right. that. Just. Is there anything you would tell Hunter because his dad? Jesus Christ. Apparently the president is worried about him relapsing. Anyone with an addict in their family worries about them relapsing, stupid. Any kind of advice or encouragement that somebody like you could give to Hunter Biden? Yeah, since you've done such a great job with your shitty, sniffy, weird, angry, dopey kids, uh, all deference to Tiffany, who seems to be humping along just fine outside the circle. Um, anyway, could you fuck up his life the way you've fucked up Eric and Don's? Well, I think what's happened is, you know, they went after the president of the United States, and I guess Republicans went after them. <laughs> what? Who? And I think it's a very bad, you know, the whole thing is very bad. There's no can you imagine being Greg right now? You just asked him that question. Do you have any advice for Hunter Biden about his addiction that you could probably give him? Because obviously his dad sucks at it or he wouldn't have been an addict in the first place because there's anything that I tell you is that if somebody becomes an addict, it's obviously their parents' fault. And uh, if if they recover, it's not because their parents love them. It's because it was an accident of fate or something like that. Um, and obviously you had loving parents and that's why your older brother died of alcoholism and... Uh, Anyways, why don't you tell us how you saved Fred? Jesus Christ. And then he goes into this, well, they went after me, and therefore, I guess the Republicans went after them, so. Never been anything like what's happening right now. Uh, they go after a political opponent. Uh... Is this what, this is what you would tell Hunter? Jesus Christ. I, I, if anything could make him relapse, it would be listening to this bullshit. He's like, oh, fuck, am I high already? You know what? I take it back. This could probably get Hunter to stop, like, forever doing drugs. Like, Jesus Christ. I'm never doing drugs again. Can you imagine if this asshole made sense to me? When I say they, I'm talking about Biden. He's going after his political opponent. I think that's made, and without even knowing it, maybe, I think it's made Republicans very angry. What? First of all, <laughs> we know which Republicans are angry. But who gives a shit? Um, second, what, what does this have to do with this question? Uh, the Hunter Biden stuff is bad. Let's face it. And if you believe... <laughs> like, Greg's like, that's not what I had to say. I didn't say that. 
That's not what I'm talking about. You're supposed to. You're supposed to be the daddy I never had. You're supposed to go. I'm supposed to have this. I had this fantasy that I would ask you how you would help Hunter, and then afterwards I would go. Do you have any advice for me? Because I, Papa, and and now you're rambling and saying the same shit. It, it, it's like I'm talking to a recording. The laptop from hell. There's a lot of money that's been exchanged, and uh, it's a lot of money. And seems like it's. Uh, by the way, it's not the laptop from hell. It's the laptop from Russia, actually. Uh, so a lot of proof. They're going to find out, and they certainly have found out. Because look, a lot of money is has been exchanged, and from a lot of different countries, including China. <laughs> what are you nodding about, motherfucker? What is this? And that's serious stuff. But I would just say to him, what do you say? What do you say? I don't know. What would you say to a child of yours if you had an addiction without uh, realizing you would have to quote Biden directly from the voicemails that we've heard of him trying to save his son from addiction? Uh, what do you say other than, I guess, whatever Biden said because his kid's not an addict anymore? Uh Jesus. So many bad things have seemed to be happening. <laughs> so, so many things, what? So, so many things have seemed to be happening. What do you say? So many bad things have seemed to be happening. Yeah, so many bad things have seemed to be happening. <laughs> so so many bad things have seemed to be happen. I, I bet, I'm, I'm sorry. Now, imagine Pat Gray um, from The Blaze and his uh, hang on, hangers on um, watching a video of Joe Biden where he says, um, says, uh, shit, I can't even say it right. It's so weird. What do you say? So many bad things have seemed to be happen. And if Biden said so many bad things have seemed to be happen, how how would the lovely folks at the blaze r respond to that sentence? Okay, we move on. Uh, now they they blame the fact that he's got drug use, and one and one say they say, oh, he's done a wonderful job, and he was the smartest person I've ever met. This is the father saying it. And then in the other case, every time there's something wrong, he says, well, he's got a big problem with drugs or whatever the problem is. <laughs> whatever the problem is. I don't know. It's something about, I, don't, I have the best memory, but I don't even remember what they said about my, uh, the guy who kicked my ass from the basement and won with more votes than any president in history. Um, I can't even remember what his son's story is. I mean, have, has anybody even heard about this? I don't know. It's so, the news cycle's so busy right now. I barely know anything about this fella. Uh, you gotta just find it out, I guess. I, it is you gotta just find it out, I guess. Fuck me. This. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is a. Uh, again, if this was Biden, this would be a feeding frenzy. If this was a, if, literally just those two statements in a row, would be an entire Hannity episode. Except he wouldn't show it because Greg Kelly's got the interview and they wouldn't pay Newsmax, I guess, to show a clip. There's nothing much you can say. You know There's nothing much you can say to, a, to what? If you have a child that has a drug problem, whether they're young or old, there's really not much you can say. I mean, I guess basically you just got to sit back and watch them die. Welcome to Trump's America. That's right. Tr the, the party of family values is, it has a, 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 a rerun running for office, a rerunner for office who, whose input on a drug addicted child and what a parent should say to them or what advice you could give is, I don't know, I really, I don't know. I guess you got a, a little bit of tough love, you know, ignore them and pretend you don't know what their problem is. That seems to be, it's great. Whose laptop will be the next October surprise? Um, <clears throat> Alexander Smirnoff. Well, he's being accused of some very bad things, but hopefully it all goes away. We have to get back to building our country again. We have to get back to. Hopefully it all goes away. Ho 
hopefully Hunter Biden's case. I agree. There you go. Hopefully it all goes away. Hopefully Comer and Jim Jordan realize, you know, that they, they I don't know, they find two I don't know, I was about to say friends, but acquaintances with those long shoehorns that help them pry their head out of their ass. And uh, and and they just realize, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I, I was projecting everything Trump does onto Hunter Biden when he was an addict and Joe Biden when he's never done anything even close to what this fuck head is doing. Huh, let's just pretend I didn't say all that shit. Our country's a laughing stock all over the world. Our country is never... That, by the way, just imagine this motherfucker at like a group, um, like, uh, I guess, um, like NA or AA or, or, you know, um, sitting around with family members go, uh, with their addicted child and a parent sitting there talking to the group. And, um, and there's just a bunch of people sitting around there going, I don't know what, what can you say to a kid that has, um, uh, you know, is that big of a fuck up. I hope it just, I hope his drug use just goes away, I, I guess, or whatever. But I mean, Honestly, what is there to live for? The country's in shambles. We're all living in a giant burning shithole. So, I mean, I don't know. Smoke them if you got them, I guess. <laughs> what the hell? Been in a position now. Uh, Putin, as you know, is talking about nuclear weapons. Again, you're trying to... Hey, asshole. This is not how you stop someone from doing drugs. And he wants nuclear weapons. And we have a man that can't talk. He can't negotiate. He doesn't know he's alive. He gets up and makes a speech. The other day, he's screaming at everybody like a lunatic. Well, then, he uh, certainly seems to know he's alive then. I, um... And everybody said, oh, he made it. You know, he made it. He made it. No, they didn't. No, nobody was like, well, whew, he made it. They were like, Jesus, that was kick ass. It, it, like he responded to the hecklers. He he fucking dog walked the, the GOP into yet another embarrassing moment where they agreed to not fight him on a particular policy. He made a mockery of the fact that they will show up at these ribbon cuttings for projects they didn't vote for or they actively voted against while patting. They want to be patted on the back for getting money to their district. And he's like, hey, if you want to if you want to give back some of that federal money, I'm, I'm all for it. Knock yourself the fuck out. Right. It, it wasn't that he just made it through it. He nailed it. And he was, even with being late getting there, he was late getting up to the, the top because he was in conversation with a lot of the people that were there. And then he stayed until they shut the fucking lights off. Nobody, no one, I mean, well, no, there's always a someone. But mostly it was, if I saw anybody say, look, he just made it through and everybody's, you know, excited about it. It's all been right wingers. They didn't fall down and he gets credit for it. Bullshit. He killed it. He it through, barely. He made it through the speech and he was all jacked up. And you just want He was all jacked up. Yeah, really? How how? What was he what was he jacked up on? And they've they've shut down the pill mill that was the White House medical closet or whatever the fuck that the, the pharmacy that was there. Wonder what's going on. This is a very dangerous time for our country. That's what you say to an addict. I think so. I mean, Jesus, I don't know why he doesn't just walk around Skid Row and other places, you know, spreading this message of hope. Don't shoot up. The world is worse off than you are. Just if, if you're high and you use drugs, you won't get to appreciate when the asteroid hits. Two more quick things. Um... Because if I, I'm afraid to ask you another substantive question. By the way, that was the answer to him asking what advice he would have for Hunter Biden about his addiction. I want to respect your time. <laughs> in 2016, you somebody told him to wrap it up. You did the opposite of what the political professionals would recommend. Almost. <laughs> what do you mean? Being a pig, bragging about grabbing women by the pussy, um, calling your uh, sexual assault victims too ugly to sexually assault that those kind of those pieces of advice, which I happen to think are probably good. I mean, I would argue, say, don't do it in the first place. Every turn and you won. And that's a yeah, but he lost the popular vote by three million votes, and then he was trounced in the next election. Amazing. That's a testament to you. But is there such a thing as... Isn't losing... Isn't being a one-termer also a testament to him? Because I... We literally had three two-termers in a row. Obama, Clinton, and, and George W. The last one term we had was George H.W., and he was still vice president and arguably, you know... A, 
heavily in charge of big decisions in the Reagan White House. So he was, you know, in power for 12 years. Overconfidence. I mean, you've been right a lot, but. I was right about the fact that your tongue jut nauseates me. I mean, there are a few things that make me feel like I'm going to shit my pants more than my own reflection. And one of them is your tongue jut, that thing you do. I'm, I'm worried. Like, I, I'm afraid that there's like a fly going by and you're like part frog or something. Or uh, I just lean back every time you do it. But nobody's right all the time. Is <laughs> there such a thing as overconfidence are you at this point tough to advise or i know you got great advisors but have you did you learn some negative lessons by being right when they were wrong and you might think well i'm always right they must always be wrong well they do have a hat on and i don't produce it somebody else trump was right about everything i mean if you look at all they do have a hat on that says Trump was right about everything. So you mean your, what, your advisors walk around in a hat that they wear? <laughs> like You mean on sale? They sell a hat. There's a hat for sale. They don't have a hat. on Because literally, the way you said it, it sounds like your advisors all walk around wearing a fucking hat that says Trump was always right. Which is, oh, it, is that required for hiring? What the fuck? All of these many, many things. I've been right about everything. I've been no, you haven't. Right about immigration. I've but the little right. things, tactics yeah. and things like that. But, uh, look, uh, I... The little things, you know, the shit that made you lose. Uh, little things like COVID won't go away when spring comes. That shoving a light bulb up your ass and gargling bleach won't cure COVID. What the I listen fuck? to a lot of very smart people. I listen to people that aren't so smart. You find out they're not smart later on. Look, I've had people that are great working for me but i've also had people where it was a mistake having them uh one of the things and i, I say this uh very very strongly i feel believe it very strongly i came to washington i wasn't like in the washington establishment it's an establishment i was a new york person i was a new york person i thought he was a private business people isn't that sorry isn't that what he says hold on i think we have that one yeah i was a private business people which makes sense i was a private business people. I was a private business people. Yes, right. And Group Dragons, I thought he had the best people. Yes, he, has, he knows the best people. He didn't need to be part of the establishment. He had his own, he had the New York establishment. All the really smart guys that, you know, could knock out these negotiations right away. So quick. Now, never mind the fact that it's not his fault that he signed the phase one of his China deal in the last year of his presidency while he was putting off a COVID response so as not to upset the Chinese people. And one would think that if he was complaining about the deals we had, he would bring those folks in and, uh, okay, hold on one second. What the, 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 David, you got, yeah, um, um, you got to stop with the spamming of people. Yeah, yeah, new. Sorry. So weird. And I didn't come here much. I was here, they say, the press says 17 times. You don't know? I didn't know people like uh, normally you would. <laughs> you mean based on their qualifications? But normally you would know people based on their 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 ability to do a job, keep a job, or advise you properly. You just knew people based on what I, I don't know a mix of adversarial and and you know. Both of you were economic leeches, so you had something in common. And I put great people in, but I also put people that I made a mistake with. I, I made a mistake with some people I put in. Uh, obviously, it wasn't a grave mistake because we had no wars. I got out of wars. I rebuilt the military. We also, you didn't get out of wars. You didn't get out of wars. We were still in Afghanistan when he left. He ran on doing it, and he was going to get us out immediately. The, even Syria, like, he, he left the Kurds to be slaughtered. These are the people who fought ISIS alongside of us. He's like, ah, fuck them. We don't even need it. What he means when he got out of wars was that we stopped fighting in areas where we were saving lives and we had a justified reason for being there. And he stayed in the areas that were the worst, like Afghanistan. Defeated ISIS, you know, all the different things we did, lowest taxes ever. Also, he didn't defeat ISIS. ISIS is still around. ISIS was uh, literally behind the bombing 
on it. Like, yeah, Biden got us out of the Afghan war. He never prepped it. This is just dumb. We got the biggest tax cuts ever or the biggest regulation cuts ever. But nevertheless, uh, I now know people. Also, um, here's one of the things. If you brag about biggest reg uh, like uh, regulation cuts ever and then train crashes go up after that precipitously um i would uh, either admit that was some of those cuts might have been mistakes or shut the fuck up i now know i believe washington probably at the upper levels better than anybody Well, they certainly, I guess, know you. And I think I'm going to have some unbelievable people. And I uh, Well, that, that's what you said last time. Like who? I have unbelievable people that want to be with us. I right. I don't believe you. None of us believe you. There, I have unbelievable people. I've got uh, D.B. Cooper. I've got Bigfoot. I've got unbelievable people. I have some gray aliens. Unbelievable. I want to believe, but it's unbelievable <laughs> the people that I have. You know, as per the f first part of the interview. Tr Sorry, I he uh, at some point back up. Well, people that want to be with us, I have, you know, as per the f first part of the interview, tremendous people, some of the most talented people, they want to come into this administration. So we'll that's what he said the first time. And none of that was true. You mean like Jeff Sessions? You mean like Bill Barr? You mean like Chris Ray? You mean like Kelly? Good Lord. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I mean, we did see what happens, you dumb son of a bitch. We're wrapping up, but uh, the general mm -hmm. election is underway right now. Yeah, yeah. The other night I saw you, and I guess Saturday night, you said, I reached my hand out to Democrats right now if you want to join us. <laughs> When, when was that? Was that, was that before or after he was like, Saudi Arabia and Russia. Uh, and that was beautiful, but it was in the middle of, it was beautiful, but nobody heard of it. A, of a rally yeah. that the other side's not seeing, networks aren't carrying it. And he means not seeing it. To reach out to them, to the people who've been lied to about you. Yeah. How are you going to do that? And are you going to show another side to yourself? Asshole. How's he going to get back the Haley voters? Fuck, he's not, he's not going to appeal to Democrats, motherfucker. The only people that that even hashtag Democrat themselves are bullshit, like, faux aggressive, like, off the fucking charts lunatics who pretend to be Democrats, try to lurch the party in one for, direction, but they never fucking vote. And they're, if they did, it would go against their brand. So they just stand there and pretend. It, it, those are the people who want to see the whole fucking thing burn down, like Jimmy Dore. So they'll vote for Trump and lie about their motivation for doing it. But ultimately, the reasoning is, is they want everything to be destroyed, except for, of course, their million dollar piece of real estate, I mean, multi million dollar piece of real estate that they live on because they know it won't actually happen. So they can, you know, they can back their way through it. Never change anything. So during my tenure, we had the most successful economy in history. No, we didn't. And it's very interesting. I was called, all of a sudden, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, women, men, with diploma, without diploma. Everybody was doing great. Y y yeah. Um, especially the first year when you hadn't implemented any policies yet. and But certainly not during COVID. And I was seeing real success. And I was being called by... Some very liberal or progressive, you want, want to use the term, they don't like liberal anymore, but I'll call them whatever, whatever it is, from some very liberal people. Some people that you would never think would call, Greg, and they... Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, he said this repeatedly. Um, first, I'll just say bullshit, with just <laughs> like nonsense. This is garbage. Yeah, he'll never name anybody because it's bullshit. Because they'll go, I never called that motherfucker. Or he's going to say, I was getting calls from people you wouldn't believe. Yeah, during fucking COVID, when he and the White House were in charge of, of medical equipment, 
and fucking like disease response and like are you, of course you were getting those calls during covid and it wasn't because things were going well I wanted to get together the country was coming together and success is going to bring the country together uh-huh and it should come together but you have some very bad people politically on the other side some people i really think i actually think they hate the country they hate oh it so those those must be the people you're going to add to your cabinet then hate the country there are some people who can't get past i know this has been a thing for a long time the tone people delight in the tone i like the straight talk but some people forget the success they're just horrified by oh he said a bad word or he said this about you used a nickname is there any <laughs> way to get them to get those people i think so i do i do i think i think ultimately uh i'm gonna get them because the country is it's doing fine now but it's gonna eat shit and fall apart and be on fire and terrible violence you know like you know because of the gen 6 hostages they're gonna see people attacking about that or whatever and they're gonna they're gonna you know come across they're gonna vote for me because they're afraid if they don't their roommate will kill them <laughs> i do believe it's uh when we prove that we were right we were right about things and when we like we prove that we were right remember that when we prove that we were right hey asshole the the border didn't get better when the wall went up it didn't help as a matter of fact the access road you had to build on the mexican side of the wall to build the fucking thing is exactly why people have more paths across and title 42 which you put in place because of covid meant people could be kicked out and come back and kicked out and come back without it ever affecting the record because you never processed anybody you just pushed them right out and then they went back they got another bag of drugs and came straight through and then they got kicked out and they came back through again and if they managed to squeak by they could get up into the country and do fuck all about this i came in and before i ever started i was under investigation i don't mean this i'm talking about before i even announced i was running for president i was well, yeah, but you were criming for years. Under investigation by these lunatics. <laughs> Again, Greg asked him this question, and this is... It, it, the question was, how are you going to win over Democrats to vote for you in this election? Again, I would argue that this dumb motherfucker should have asked, like, how are you going to win back the Haley voters? Like, 30% of them say they're not going to vote for you. How do you do it? Thanks, Cindy. Fear not. This is... uh. <laughs> Well, it's all good. But that was the question. And they were investigating me because they thought I might be running for office. I fired. <laughs> no, it wasn't because they thought you were running for office. A lot of people run for office. A lot of outsiders run for office. Fucking Ron Paul was as rush it up as you were. And they didn't. They missed it the first time around. That Once they started sniffing around, he just decided magically not to run again. They called me very early. It was a good move. I, if I didn't, I might not be talking. And you got investigated. For it. Yeah, oh, I got investigated for it. By the way, I made the right move. That was a great move. That's getting rid of the deep state, but I got rid of him, got rid of a lot of other people. Yeah, you put in Chris Ray. What has changed, dumbass? Basically, Trump tried to fire Comey, and we know this, and we've adjudicated this done a ton, a ton of times, but we, he tried to get rid of Comey essentially to hamstring the investigation into himself and put in a loyalist who would be his sort of a Roy Cohn interrupter for him. It's the same thing Matt Gates tried to do, like ousting McCarthy to stop the ethics investigation into him. He thought it would stop it. It paused it for a while, but it didn't stop it. And we were doing, we were doing really well. But uh, these people, if if I were really nice about things and soft, and let's talk about not using certain tone or certain words or. Probably I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have survived. I had to be tough. And then people say he's tough. Yeah, but you don't have to. Again, why? Maybe it's just because you have a lame vocabulary, or you assume that the people are okay with your lame vocabulary because they hate the people you're talking about enough. But they put me under the gun from long before I got invest. But before I got elected. Yeah. What do you, Greg? What do you expect them to do? Outsmart them? What what's he supposed to do? He, he he's got he's the kind of guy who just picks up a bat and starts swinging. And if he knocks a couple of kids in the head, they shouldn't have been in that restaurant in the first fucking place. Like, what what's he supposed to do? 
play chess when they're playing checkers and outsmart them by being 10 moves ahead? He can't do that. He's a fucking dumbass. Of course he's going to be a, a brute. I was under a gun like nobody and probably no other president in history. Going back at them, you're going back at the deep state. You could lose the middle at the same time. Like, you're fighting for your life. You're fighting for the country. Uh -huh. But they're alienated along the way. I, you're not in... Greg's seeing the real numbers, and he's worried for Trump. Anticipating any kind of shift in style, in approach, in a... I don't know, like... Like, I don't know. What if you, like... And work with me on this. What if you, like... I don't know, grew the fuck up all of a sudden... You know, all that stuff about becoming presidential the first time around that you managed to slip by on. What if you just tried that, asshat? Rocky Balboa was fighting Apollo yeah, Creed. He, yeah. switched, he switched from right hand to left yeah. hand. Something yeah, no, just to change the game. No, he doesn't understand. Uh, I would like to. Also, to that point, fuck you for bringing Rocky into this, you dickhead. But Rocky, that, that would mean... Can't you just be nice for a little while and then go back to being a piece of shit and surprise everybody? That, because he was a, he's a southpaw. So the idea is that he switched up on purpose. It was the first switch that was the meaningful part. That would mean that he's asking Trump, can't you be nice up till like August and then be a complete bastard to get you over the line? Stupid. To say yes, I will always be nice. I will always be respectful. But when they hit you, you have to hit them back. And then people will say, oh, gee, Trump isn't a nice guy because I hit back hard. They say Trump isn't a nice person. But they do like my policy and they do like the fact that I had the safest border in the history of our country. I had... Thanks, COVID. You know, the, we, had, we had statistics that nobody's ever seen. I had the greatest... <laughs> That's true. No one has ever seen the statistics he keeps saying. ...just economy in the history of our country. I had the big... Yeah, and nobody wrote about it. And there's like no... You wouldn't believe it. They're, like, nobody's ever seen the numbers that would say I had the greatest economy, but we did. It just wasn't printed anywhere. Not in the Bureau of Labor Statistics, not in our economic data, not in Bloomberg, not in Market Watch, not in the Financial Times, not in the Wall Street Journal. People, like, nobody's ever seen. Literally, no one has ever seen it. It's tax it just bounces around in my fucking empty, empty dome. Cuts in the history of our country. The greatest regulation cuts in the history of our country. The best job numbers. We had to... No, we have the best job numbers in 50 years. Now. Things that nobody's ever done before. <laughs> yes, no one has ever blown off a pandemic and also gutted a program that literally was meant to get rid of bad cops that would have kicked Chauvin to the curb long before he ever had a chance to run into George Floyd. We built the military, a created Space Force, uh, right to try, which is such a big deal, right to try from the standpoint you could get medicine uh, that won't come out for five or six years, but if it was working, we got that people, you know, people that need. Well, if it's working or if it's not working, I mean, the idea is that they're gonna die anyways, so why not experiment on the very sick? We did this, and in many cases it worked. We saved thousands of lives. Yeah, I would guess that a bunch of people tried stuff and it didn't work. And maybe there were secondary, right? There were uh, other effects that maybe weren't good. I'm just judging from the ads that I see for medicines that a good portion of them, you know, a bunch of people got back hair that, that you know, old ladies who suddenly... Like, why do I smell like a man and my feet itch all the time and my tongue's inflating and, oh my God, my heart stopped. Um, I, I have to, I don't want to be phony. You know, in a certain way, you could say, well, are you willing to really change and be a phony? I see. You don't have to be phony. You can be respectful that you're not the only fucking person in the world or that the rest of the Americans that are in the country might have a point. You all the time where people are not being themselves. Uh, what? Wait. I see it all the time where people are not being themselves. Uh, I have to fight back. These people, are, many of them are evil people. I think they're actually, many of them are sick people. You know, I talk about... Uh, well, sick and evil are different things. You're not responsible if you're sick. You're responsible if you're evil. Uh, the danger we have from the outside, but I also talk about the danger from within. These people, many of them, you know, they make up false stories like Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. That was a hoax. That was a long... It took me two years to get rid of that thing. Yeah, it wasn't a hoax, by the way. Can, can I, real quick, point of order, Mr. Chairman, if I may. 
Um, I put this article in the thing. I hope it's still in there. Um, um, this story in The Guardian that came up. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, uh, yeah, hang on, get out of here. Um, so U.S. firm that paid indicted FBI informant tied to Trump Associates records reveal. One of them, by the way, was fucking uh, Paul Manafort's real estate fixer was the way they described him. And uh, again, of all that's supposed to be a, that's a court drawing of Alexander Smirnoff. Yeah, Russia was not a hoax. Um, an American company that paid the now indicted FBI informant Alexander Smirnoff, who I don't know from the name sounds Russian and had connections with Russian intelligence and admitted to it. Uh, in 2020, is connected to a UK company owned by Trump Business Associates in Dubai, according to business filings and court documents. Smirnoff is now accused of lying to the FBI about Hunter Biden and his father, President Joe Biden, alleging that they engaged in a bribery scheme with executives of the Ukrainian energy... Um, uh, how do you say it again? The Burmese executives. Yeah. So this uh, Burmese, Burmese, they say, pronounce it Burmese. Yeah, nobody does. Nope, nope, still pronounced Burisma. Yeah throwing that out there. Okay. Smirnoff's accounts uh, to the FBI beginning in 2020. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, allegedly, they engaged in a bribery scheme with the executives of Ukraine. Uh, uh, Smirnoff's accounts to the FBI beginning in 2020 that federal prosecutors now say were, are fabrications served as major justification for the House impeachment investigation in the Bidens. Republican lawmakers have repeatedly touted Smirnoff as a reliable informant and the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, James Comer, even threatened to hold FBI Director Christopher Wray in contempt unless he handed over a June 2020 FBI form uh, with Smirnoff's claims to the committee. Now, I have told you guys before that I love this. One of my favorite things about this whole story is that all of the allegations by Alexander Smirnoff could have been used to Smirnoff all over the Bidens all the way through the election. That if if they'd have just known that this uh, FD 20, 1023 was there, right? We, and people just talked about it. They're like, we've heard about it. You guys have read it. We've heard of it. And moving on, there's this and this and this and this. But because they weren't finding anything, they had to like, we need something on paper that, uh, you know, that really sells this shit. You know, that really, that, so we want a copy of this FD-1023 so we can fucking look at this FBI file. It says that this guy, okay. And so they insisted, they fucking insisted that Christopher Ray come up with this thing. And again, threatening to hold him in contempt if he didn't provide it. If they'd have just left well enough alone, they could have used it to smear him the entirety of the time. Like, uh, you know, but because they insisted on it, it meant not only giving it, but they were arguing, you must look into this. We want to copy this and it is horrible. Look at this thing. You, the FBI didn't do anything with this. And so the FBI went, fuck, all right, there's a lot of political pressure on us. And obviously we knew it was bullshit, but we got to circle back around. And they sat down with this dumb motherfucker again. And he not only lied again after they knew because they looked into it basically the entire time. Chris Ray was like, I'm not going to give it to you because he was like, dude, you don't fucking want it. Don't, don't ask me for it. It's a fuck. Just shut the fuck up. Like... Christopher Ray, I would argue, was trying to help these dickheads. And they wouldn't, they didn't recognize the warning, right? They didn't notice. And so they insisted on having it. And they insisted the FBI go talk to this motherfucker again. Not only did he tell the same lies when they, you know, when time has passed and they know now he was not anywhere near the place he said he was. They knew he was in an entirely different country. He hadn't even met these people. He even bragged about meeting the people later, you know, then, you know, two years after he said he had met them in the original statement, all this shit. Right. If they had shut up, it Smirnoff would be a free man. But it's because they had to push it. They they threatened Christopher. You don't give us this fucking piece of paper. We're going to th throw you in jail. And he's like, OK, there you go, assholes. And he gave it to him. They looked through it and 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 now the guy's going to jail. Alexander Smirnoff. If he doesn't, if he's not smart enough to be fucking pissed at James Comer, he's as stupid as he is scheming. Um, back in 2020, Smirnoff was paid $600,000 by a company called Economic Transformation Technologies. 
<laughs> uh, crypto, basically. It, it's a uh, it's money laundering. It's a, if you want to talk about money laundering and China money and all that shit, look anywhere. There's crypto. Um, that same year, Smirnoff began lying to the FBI about the Bidens on Q. Get six hundred thousand dollars from this company, and then all of a sudden, he starts telling a whole different story, contradicting himself and telling the FBI he was in a country he wasn't in um, at times he wasn't in it. All right. And by the way, saying that there was video of Hunter Biden going into a club in Ukraine when Hunter Biden has literally never set foot in Ukraine. Um, ETT's CEO is uh, the American Christopher Condon, who is also one of three shareholders in ETT Investment Holding uh, Limited in London. Other shareholders in the UK, including a Pakistani American investor, Shahal Khan and Farooq Arjamand, a former chairman and current board member of Damak Properties in Dubai, who's also listed as an advisor on ETT's uh, American website. Damak is uh, a friend of Trump's. Last month, Smirnoff was charged with lying to the FBI. He's being held, you know, we know this stuff. Smirnoff indict, uh, indictment alleged that the assertions in the document known as the Denver, okay, we see the exact business model of Texas-based ETT is murky. Its mission statement reads in part, ETT set up the chessboard to bring in top-notch executives from those sectors to help implement its vision of love and social impact to improve the quality of human existence through the application of new age technologies. Fuck, <laughs> what? All right. I, we need somebody to get eyes on Marianne Williamson right fucking now. Um, because I, we're going to find out she's behind this whole thing. That's why she's running against Biden. She's part of this group to like bring down the presidency so that uh, she can bring in the age of aquariums. The age of aquariums. All right. That was my impersonation of a fish in an aquarium. You're welcome. All right. Um, the current CEO, Condon, is a California man who has been involved in several civil lawsuits, including a civil RICO case in 2010, weird, that he won on appeal. Condon's official biography says he is a, a former professional tennis player, financial advisor, and is currently an entrepreneur focused on social impact projects, public-private partnerships. Ooh, Glenn Beck's favorite thing, public-private partnerships, a a.k.a. communism, um, and uh, creating smart communities that benefit both individuals and governments. Smart community. You mean 15-minute cities and all that shit that apparently... Okay. Khan, uh, Arjumand, and Khan registered ETT Investment Holding Limited in the UK on March 6, 2020. Hmm. Uh, Khan, an investor who purchased the Plaza Hotel in 2018. Hmm. Arjumand had ties to Donald Trump through Trump Associate and Damek, a major Middle East developer that has partnered with Trump for a decade. Arjumand, Khan, and Condon own 34, 33, and 33% of ETT Investment Holdings Limited, respectively, according to UK business filings. No other information on the UK company is readily available because it doesn't fucking do anything. You're going to talk about, they got all these money laundering uh, shale companies, a shale company. The former Damak chairman, uh, Hussein Sajwani, is also close to Trump and has been described as his friend in multiple news reports. Trump has called his bil the billionaire a friend and a great man and his family the most beautiful people. Um... I don't know if he means that in sort of a Marilyn Manson kind of way. Uh, Sajwani attended Trump's 2016 inauguration. Weird. And Trump's sons, Donald Jr. and Eric, attended a 2017 ribbon cutting of the Trump International Golf Club in Dubai, licensed by Damac in 2014. Sajwani and his family also attended a party in 2017 at Mar-a-Lago. Trump's sons would go on to attend Sajwani's daughter's wedding in 2018, where absolutely no confidential... Um, Government documents were exchanged for future potential business benefit at all. I guarantee it. Thanks, Squigs, for noticing. Um, Hussein Damak, a, uh, a friend of mine, a great guy. I was offered $2 billion to do a deal in Dubai, a number of deals, and I turned it down, Trump said in 2017. Did you, though? Because it looks like, I, I guess... Uh, Jared picked it up on behalf of the family. Arjman was uh, vice chairman of Damac when Trump International Golf Club, along with, uh, with adjoining Trump-branded luxury homes, opened, and he uh, replaced Sajwani as chair in 2021 when Sajwani stepped down to privatize the company. Uh, Khan, who owns Dubai-based Trinity White City Ventures, 
is a New York native who partnered New York City developer Kamran Hakim to buy the Plaza Hotel in 2018 for uh, $600 million. He was a board member of ETT from 2019 to 2020. According to his LinkedIn page, appeared in event uh, photographs with Khan done in Miami that year. Khan is also is involved in a range of businesses from AI to mining to cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. According to his official biographies, in 2019, he was one of a dozen Pakistani-American business owners invited to meet the Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan the day before Imran met with Trump. And Mike Pompeo, the then the Secretary of State in Washington, D.C., the group was there to discuss the expansion of business in Pakistan. You don't say. 2017, Khan reported, uh, reportedly approached Brad Jackson, dubbed Paul Manafort's real estate fixer, to help him broker a deal to buy the Roosevelt Hotel in Manhattan, owned by the Pakistani government via its national airline for $500 million, according to the real deal. When the real estate publication asked Khan about the reports, he denied that Jackson and Manafort, a former Trump campaign chairman, were involved. Khan purchased the Pakistani embassy building in D.C. in 2022 for $6.8 million. Um, and uh, the fact that the dude bought the fucking Pakistani embassy in D.C., and that's how much it cost, $6.8 million, and Trump still can't buy a fucking house? Khan is also CEO of Burtech Acquisition Group, a blank check company, a SPAC, as it were, or public shell company. Uh, Patrick Orlando, listed as a special advisor and shareholder of Burtech in 2021, was CEO and chair of Digital World, another blank check company, from September 2021 to March 2023, when it began a merger with Trump Media and Technology Group in 2021. It was held up by an, by an SEC investigation until given the green light last month. Finalization of the merger may garner Trump as much as $4 billion in shares and help bolster his finances after his recent civil litigation losses. Orlando has known Trump since 2021, uh, according to news reports. Argument, and by the way, this asshole want, is in an election year waiting on a $4 billion payoff with these sketchy motherfuckers. Um, uh, Arjumana Khan's relationship is unclear. Arjumana, a former HSBC banker um, from the United Arab Emirates, also invests in hospitality business, including Celebrity Wahlberg's uh, brother's restaurant change, Wahlberg's, and owns a coffee company called Reborn Coffee. ETT Investment Holdings was dissolved in 2021. Condon and Arjuman also registered a company uh, called Atlas UK Group Limited the same day they registered the UK ETT, now dissolved. American ETT, then called Pandora Venture Capital Corp., was first registered in Florida <laughs> in 2014 by a Wisconsin resident, uh, Boris Nayflish. That's fantastic. Boris Nayflish. Registered, in, uh, let's see, uh, according to Florida business filings, the Ukrainian-American Nayflish is uh, the ex-husband of Smirnov's current partner. According to a Wall Street Journal report, which also claimed Nayflish stayed close to his ex, Diana Lavrenyuk, and Smirnov after the divorce. Smirnov, born in Ukraine, lived in Israel before coming to the U.S. in 2006. Pandora changed his name to Skylab in 2017. Then in 2018, Skylab seemed to split from what is now ETT, according to the lawsuit, when Condon first registered ETT websites appeared on ETT's Florida filings. An unnamed former business associate told Wall Street Journal that the 600000 payment from ETT to Smirnoff was in exchange for a stake in an Israel-based crypto trading platform called Bit of Trade, not to be confused with Bit of Honey, which is uh, really hard to eat if you have fresh fillings, that Smirnoff was working on launching. That's the fun part. Was working on launching. It, not, it didn't really pan out, though. We gave him the money to start the business, and it was all in Bitcoin and shit like that. So um, I, and I'd like to say for the record that none of this is sketchy. It all, all I think it all works out. Come on. There's no, I read that whole thing right alongside you, and God damn it, that is the least hinky, conspiratorial thing I've ever written. What It's... I mean, it's right there. It's normal, above-board business. Come on. You want to talk sketchy? Let's talk about the fact that there is a, a moving walkway from the Denver airport to Delaware. Why the fuck is that? Come on. All right. Um. So. Novel haircut. Thank you. It's it's hard with the, with the, the locks hanging down. Although, I will say, um, that is what... Jesse Ventura kind of looks like. That's not that odd. And then we were totally exonerated. It was a beautiful no, he wasn't. thing, but it took me two years. 
if I was, if I didn't fight that strong, and you know how cor corrupt it was, you cover it better than just about anybody. It was totally corrupt, and if I didn't fight that with power and strength, if I was going to be some kind of a oh gee, let's all get together, let's, you know, these are evil people. Hey, fuckhead, he's asking you about the voters. He's he's. Look, the grievances are driving away a big enough chunk of people. He's fucked in this next election. If we show up, we still got to show up. We got to vote because we got to scare the maggots. Because where people might not show up for him, one of the things they might do is come out for more right-wing people in the House and the Senate. That's where they're really going to show up. They the, the Haley voters will show up maybe, but they'll vote Republican except for him. Which means, that, you know, if there's more of them coming out, they will pack the House and Senate with people that will stop Biden from passing a bill that would would codify Roe v. Wade, for example. That's up to us. That's on us. What we got to do is show up in numbers that makes that fucking happen. But he knows he's fucking done. Well, these are sick people. And they actually put our nation in a lot of danger because when you do that stuff, you really are at danger with Russia or whoever it is. And yeah, whoever. There were many other things other than that. If I didn't fight tough, if I didn't fight nasty and do it the way that I have to do it. Uh, I might have won the last election. I wouldn't be interviewed right now unless you were doing maybe a, a, a story on real estate or something. <laughs> and I'm sure that that probably wouldn't happen. Yeah, like, well, yeah, of course, because why would anybody ask you about good investment in real estate, dude? This asshole has put, has gone, gone all in. You want to talk about fucking timing. Donald Trump went all in on commercial real estate. Right, right before his presidency started. You want to, somebody who, you want to talk about somebody who has absolutely no vision or was broadsided by COVID, even while he was in office going, oh shit. He didn't have the brains to start selling interest in his properties under the table to pull a fucking, uh, like, you know, Martha Stewart. Uh, no, I have to do it. I have to do it strong. These are many of these people. Do so, so to you, strength just means being a scumbag. Deranged Jack Smith. He's a deranged individual. He was. Why? What the fuck are you talking about? He, every time you see him, he's calm just because he has a fucking beard fuck is wrong with you told to do a number of me because they think that's the way biden gets elected this is well if, if they're going to hire somebody to quote do a number on you they're not going to have somebody who's out of control and a maniac they're going to have to have somebody who's coordinating an, a, a massive attempt to to indict a former president it's never happened in this country before that's because we never had a pussy grabbing prick like you anywhere near the white house in that regard. well Johnson had his moments. If I was going to fight it in a nice way, I don't think I'd be successful. Mr. President, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you. And the lunch was great. Um, I, uh, I, I'm I, sorry the smell put me off, but I ate it anyways. And I, I know I want to be respectful of uh, your time. And also, I have brutal diarrhea coming on from uh, the omelet bar. And I... Am I, the, is it hot in here or am I sweating? Can I put my feet in some ice? <laughs> Ugh. All right. So this must be the top of it. This is the, this is the other clip of it. I, they didn't, <coughs> insofar as I know, they haven't put clips out of this. I mean, do we know CSL? They put out extra clips of it because the, um, some in chat want you to have a conversation with Carol on the show. Sure. Yeah. Um, Okay, those two are, yeah, that's what I thought, CSL. They're, they're, that's, they, they only put up this part, which means they, as far as I know, aren't posting him, introducing me, good evening, thanks, Mar-a-Lago, we're glad to be here, all that shit. Yeah, <laughs> Greg's puffy from the Mar-a-Lago fucking, he, he touched the omelet bar. Uh, a couple of news items. Okay. Then if you don't mind, Victor Orban said that you told him that you want to cut funding for Ukraine as soon as you get there. Where's that effect? He said that in an interview. Yeah. Is he uh, correct? Is that the plan? Well, first of all, he's a fantastic guy. And <laughs> no, he isn't. Just, just saying. He, he absolutely is. He's taken in no illegal immigrants. He take, he takes in. He runs his country 
very tough, and a lot of people don't like it. He's taken in no illegal immigrants. Okay, first of all, they've taken in refugees. The, the idea that he's brutal to the people who are in boats and stuff or people who are coming across the border, it, it, he likes his brutality. It's not that he's not taking them in. It's that, he's, that they're violent towards them that he likes. It, but he runs it very tough, and it does very well, and there's no crime. They don't have... Fuck off. Yes, they do. My ex-girlfriend's Hungarian. Get the fuck out of here. There's no crime. Hold on. Here's, uh, let's see. When did, uh, when did Orban, hold on. Um, Hungarian form Orban Victor, born May 31st, 1963. Aksakabaz, Hungary, Hungarian politician who served as Prime Minister of Hungary, 1998 to 2002-2010. This is from Britannica. For more, say open. So here, this he became. He was the prime minister, and then he became uh, president. And he's been there. He's kind of like creating his own, um, like fiefdom. This is. Here we go. Try to do this. Why is it so? Uh, it's, it's, uh, scroll down. Zoom out. Hold on. Mm -mm. Let's see, twenties. Let's do yeah, twenties. Yeah, we'll do it from like the Trump era. Um, and then this is just the crime stats in um, Hungary. Here we go. Um, so let's see, uh, per one hundred thousand. What's this? Uh, what's the? I mean, what's the? the standard on this um uh in intentional homicides um there's been a um 0.77 a 5.86 percent decline from 2020 in 2021 but there was a 25.29 increase from 2019 and a 25 percent point 55 decline from 2018 and then a 46.18 decline from 2017 and then this jack up over here, and then a little bit of leveling. So this is your number right here. This is uh, the absolute lack of crime. Basically stasis. I don't know what the most recent numbers are. This is what's coming up. Um, 0.77 per 100,000 for the murder rate. What's the uh, uh, similar per? Let's see. Where's the? There you go. Hungary. Uh, yeah, Portugal. Do, uh, let's see. Uh, Australia does better. Austria, Poland, Luxembourg, Spain. Singapore, we're, I mean, we're way up here. We're 6.81. Um, Liechtenstein. Of course, the uh, the size of it matters. I don't know what the, hold on. Yeah, 9 million people. It's a state, not a country. Also, interestingly enough, they don't have uh, what, what, what's the what's the gun what's the availability of guns like in Hungary? I mean, it's like uh, gun rights in Hungary. Um, based on what experts say on the issue, it is very hard to get a get permission to hold a firearm in Hungary. Nepsmana for for those who would like to have one have to be adults with no criminal record. They have to pass not only a theoretical and practical exam, but also a physical and mental exam. Who can have a gun in Hungary? I think we found the reason why their, uh, um, why their death rate is so, why their murder rate is so low, dum-dum. Um, uh, your brother lives in Hungary? Tell him I said, uh, hoj voj. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and he'll probably go, buzz mag, <laughs> if he swears as much as I do. Um, who can have a gun? The regulation is very strict. And even though a lot of firearms disappeared after the change of the regime in 1990, uh, Hungary is regarded as one of the least polluted countries regarding guns. 
Furthermore, the trend is that the authorities withdraw the arms license of almost everybody, even of members of the police or the military. So once you stop being a cop or you're in the military, you can't have a gun after. Based on what experts say on the issue, it's very hard to get permission to hold a firearm in Hungary. Um, I, could that have something to do with sort of, quote unquote, the toughness? How many languages do I know? Uh, three. Well, if you include English. Um, and then I can I could be polite in like 10 different languages. When you look at what's happening in our country where there's crime on every street corner. Well, you know, there's guns. Sure. Uh, it's certainly not. Uh, uh, it's. Uh, Hungary is certainly not polluted with guns. And, and murder death all over the place. And Murder death. That's the worst kind. And it's going to get a lot worse because of the migrants coming in. You know, millions. Why? You think they're running up here, escaping violence in their own countries or poverty to start shit up here? Millions and millions of people coming out of prisons and coming out of uh, mental institutions and they're all coming in to the United States. We had a great... Have you notice he stopped saying the whole, and some of them, I assume, are good people. You could argue, that, like, to Greg's point about when how you're going to reach people, he stopped saying that shit uh, entirely. Every time we had uh, dinner, we'd get along very well. But I told him... Yeah, because you both don't believe in individual rights. What I told him is Europe is spending a tiny fraction of what we're spending. And the European nations, as a combination, they should be paying the same because, you know, their economy is approximately the same size. If you add them all up, their economy is very close to our economy. Plus, uh, they're in a lot more danger than we are. We have an, a thing called an ocean between us, right? Is that what it's called? I, I, it's which, here, here, real quick, I think we can agree that it's called an ocean. Um, how many people want to wager on whether or not this motherfucker could could answer which ocean it is and no uh, honestly no tipping it it's either the atlantic or the pacific like and he just tries alphabetically to get away with it no you can't because this motherfucker would would go i i don't know i think the indian ocean maybe because of native americans or something and uh they don't so they're spending they have a hundred billion dollars probably more than that less spending on Ukraine than we do. They should be spending money. I had the same thing with NATO. They weren't spending on NATO. I said, you got to spend on NATO. And they did. Once I said it, I said... Again, anytime there's going to be a fight, in, a war in Europe, the entirety of, of the NATO country's militaries will be engaged in that war. They will all be fighting. It won't be like they're going to send a slice. We'll send a slice of our military over there because we got something called uh, an ocean between us. But if... If a NATO country is attacked, all the other NATO countries are using their entire military. So the 2% that they contribute is about exercises and shit. And one of the reasons why we pay more money is because we're engaged in this. We're coordinating most of it. And to get our shit over there for these coordinated efforts and stuff is a lot, is a lot more expensive. said, I won't protect you. I would not protect you if you're not spending, if you're not paid up. But Europe uh, is about $100 billion less in spending in giving money to Ukraine. And I said, that's something that really has to be taken care of. Well, again, why not go, I can make a deal. I'll get them to kick in. We're good. We, you know, we kicked in a lot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to coordinate with our partners and get people to, you know, to work together. I can convince these people. I know all the good people and I know a way because we've got levers that we can use as far as trade and other things to get them on the ball. And so I know what the right that even if you believe the bullshit he's saying, if you're supposedly the person who wrote uh, the art of the deal and all that shit, you would be the guy. Wouldn't you be the guy that could talk them into doing their shit right? B paying up or using money or giving. I, I believe personally that the, the Biden administration has been fantastic at talking to Europe about picking up a lot of things and, and arranging a lot of things like, look, we'll give you these arms if you'll give them those old ones and that kind of shit because we're running interference with our, you know, the Republicans are trying to shut this down because they're siding with Putin and all that stuff, right? Like, we, we, they've been engaging in a bunch of stuff. But I also think that that Blinken and uh, Biden aren't going to use the bully pulpit, essentially, to, to kind of leverage the politics of the area to get these countries to be all in on it for a couple reasons. One is, if Russia fires a tactical nuke at a NATO country, it ain't going to be the U.S. It's going to be one of them. So picking a direct fight during this and making them, the neighbors, actually come out and 
and talk shit if they're afraid to won't necessarily help. The other thing is, is that you can you can engage in those talks behind the scenes without embarrassing them. The problem is he thinks that's the that it, that it, the only emotion he feels is embarrassment, so he thinks that's the only leverage you have. It's not fair to us. So he was okay in saying what he said. Well, it was okay. I mean, it, it, he gave a very short statement. I saw a statement. Uh, I told him, I, I think it's very unfair to America. It's very unfair to the United States taxpayer when we're spending all of the money or a majority of the money, Europe should be spending. I right, but that's not, even that, it's like, we, you guys should be spending more. So we're going to fuck those people. We're going we're gonna to let them be raped and murdered. We'll show you. What the fuck is that? How about this? How about just America has a military that's six times the next five militaries combined, uh, including China, by the way, because that like I, I'm done with the fucking stories about how big and full and powerful their military is when their fucking aircraft carrier they just built has a giant crack across the center of it. Shut the fuck up. It was on fire right before they presented it to the public at the launch. Stop. Fuck out of here. Shut the fuck up. It drives me crazy that whole conversation. But maybe, just maybe, we, if you guys don't want to step up, America will gladly be the most powerful voice for freedom and democracy in the world as we continue, you know, to push for it for every uh, citizen in the world. Every, every person around the world should have a say in their government. We believe this. So if you guys are going to fall back, we're still going to step up because fuck you. Maybe that. Maybe that's the, the strong position. Maybe that's the America first way. Maybe that's the braggadocious, fuck, America rocks attitude. Because I would argue, as a matter of fact, I just came out with that. Let's just, let's just go there. Uh, Trump wants to push his America first bullshit, which is a lie because he means it's the first bargaining chip he will put on the table. You can have a piece of America if I could build a fucking hotel and you're, or well, somebody else will build it. But I can slap my name on a hotel in, in your country and just siphon money out of it or whatever. He's, if they're the America First Party, I'm the America Rocks Party. I'm the head of the America Rocks Party. And there's never been a movement like this. Yeah, America, fuck yeah. America Rocks, not America First. It, 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 we don't, I don't think in terms of first. It's a waste of time. Especially if you think very little of the rest of the fucking world, then what, what does it mean to be first in a, in a field of losers, according to this dickhead? I, I'm, I'm going to start the America Rocks Party. Get used to it. Call it, you have to equalize. Yeah, call it, you have to equalize. Oh, you mean like equity and diversity and inclusion? Equalize. They have to equalize what we spent, and they should do that. And they will do that, just like they did with NATO. They will do that if somebody is in there to tell them. But I don't, do you think... If somebody is in there to tell them. They will do that if they believe we're going to just let these people die. Biden's calling them, saying you have to equalize. I don't think he's ever said that. Well, no, because that's not actually how you talk about any of this shit. One more thing from... No, no one speaks like that. No one goes, you have to equalize. What? I'm, I'm sorry, are you getting too much bass or too much treble? In today's news, TikTok, the Republicans just voted to, I, Republicans and Democrats just voted to ban it. You don't think they should ban it right now? Well, yeah, well, Kellyanne Conway told you uh, to be against it, and all of a sudden you are when you were going to begin, like, this is going to be beautiful. How does he walk both sides of this line? I didn't say anything other than... <laughs> then I need it to get reelected and i think that facebook is going to uh make sure that you know uh, people can vote you have to look at facebook facebook is the why look facebook wants to slice what tiktok was doing as far as short form stuff but so does youtube and quite frankly uh, uh, we had vine and snapchat before we had tiktok both of them the same if if tiktok was to shut down then either vine would pop back up or or snapchat would see market growth. Snapchat was the biggest, uh, like, yeah, I guess it was, it was affected more than any other social media platform by the growth of TikTok. It was on its way up and it was totally sideswiped by this shit. So if you're going to salvage an American company, which Snapchat is, 
um, you would you would be for this. Enemy of the people. They did those lockboxes. They spent five hundred million. Do you know if you spent more than five thousand six hundred dollars or whatever the number is, if you spent a hundred dollars more, they put you in prison. Yeah, but that's directly to a party or a candidate. How, how is how is giving grants to cities to provide voting machines or lockboxes? What the fuck does that have to do with? Party affiliation, nothing. That's why it's legal, dum dum. For campaign violations, right? Zuckerberg or Zuckerbucks, whatever you want to call him. Fuck you. Again, this like anti Semitic, you know, Jews equal money bullshit that Mike Pillow does all the time, which was really the first shot out across the bow where we realized that he was not just like a, you know, a, a gullible dickhead. He was actually in. Right. Um, was the fact that he started using this Zuckerbucks thing because of, you know, attaching it to fucking. I'm just saying, you'll notice that whenever they had a problem with Elon Musk, especially because Tesla wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the Obama administration, period, end of fucking story. There is no Elon Musk that we're all talking about. There is no Elon Musk purchasing of Twitter, or any of that shit without uh, Barack Obama um, putting money into the recovery package after in 2009 for electric car companies. Not like we're not even talking about that motherfucker. But at one point they didn't like him or or the times when they're like he's kicking Alex Jones off or he's doing these other things. They never call him Elon Bucks, do they? They never accuse him of just doing it for money even when they're just as mad at him about shit, right? Yeah, he calls him uh, Mike Pillow calls him suck a buck, um but he's called him Zucker Bucks and so is he. It's and it and again, it's anti-Semitic. That's what they're doing is spending the number is crazy he's spending uh 500 million dollars in the last election and nothing happens to him and on what anybody can vote with those machines anybody can drop off their ballots anybody is it because they're just in the districts that that right wingers and and Republican governors especially have like denied working voting machines and drop off boxes to specifically to try and mute the vote in certain districts. Hmm. That money's being passed all all over the place, especially on the lock boxes or so called lock boxes because they're not lock boxes. They're all, I call them open boxes. <clears throat> yeah, you know it is. He's got a he's got a, a way with words. Um, it's it's a way that no one else actually understands, but... I know words. I had the best words. Uh-huh. He totally does. And an ominous, really an, an ominous... Criminal... Look, look, wait. Obama. I hope they now go and take a look at the oranges. <laughs> Asshole. Um, sorry, I don't have the other one as a drop right now. Um, I'll, I'm going to add that. And I think that something has to be done with Facebook. And one thing I will say... What? I, sorry, uh, somebody running for office, running to be president of the United States, if you're going to talk about a company, whether it's fucking uh, Microsoft and Facebook or it's fucking U.S. Steel or uh, it, it's Moderna or Pfizer, or anything, what? Fucking what? What has to be done with them? What are you going to do? Are you going to accuse them of, of being a monopoly? monopolistic practices and therefore try to shut them down because they bought WhatsApp and all of a sudden you're scared hey, because face. your fucking buddies were all using WhatsApp to coordinate on January 6th and you're all shitting bricks that eventually they're going to comply with a subpoena to look into that stuff? Is that what it is? Facebook to get bigger because I think Facebook is an equal threat and mm. that includes with China because if China wants to Yes. It's China and and Facebook. Yeah, that's yeah. Your 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 mom sending you messages all the time, and uh, the Chinese trying to set up fake accounts on. It's the fact that Facebook shuts down the fake accounts that's really pissing him off. He didn't mind when when they benefited him, but now all of a sudden uh, they're they're closing down all these like um, sock puppet accounts for Russia and China that were that benefited him in 2016, and now he's like. Oh, fuck that place. To know anything about what Facebook knows, they're going to give them the information. Mr. President, I'm What? Hold on. 
What did that mean? Get bigger because I think Facebook is an equal threat. And mm. that includes with China. Because if China wants to know anything about what Facebook knows, they're going to give them the information. Wait a minute. So Facebook is, he's accusing Facebook of selling or actually not even selling, just giving private information on American citizens to China for, for while, while calling the guy, by the way, uh, Zuckerbucks, apparently they're just going to give it to China because they, he loves money and capitalism and he's, he's Jew and that's how they operate, except communism. I don't know what the fuck. Mr. President, I'm very curious about what it's like for you, your life, you know, your- <laughs> Yeah. What, uh, what the fuck is wrong with you? No one's gone through what you've gone through. Nobody- Oh, God. Yeah, it's so hard. Oh, my God. Nobody's had to live. I mean, sure, some people who've been in prison for crimes they didn't commit and were exonerated after a couple of decades and, and uh, people who were- uh, you know, lost their homes in the 2008 crash when they had never missed a payment, but the banks just started, uh, you know, shutting things down and they, they lost their job all of a sudden because the line of credit their boss used and all, and, you know, they were on the street for a while, had to move back in with their parents, with their family and that kind of shit and took them five years to get back on their feet and they, they, they never missed a payment, but they had to declare bankruptcy just to get out from under shit and all that. Yeah, that, the, what they, I mean, that's, that's bullshit run-of-the-mill normie stuff but what you've been through you know with uh, you know, three wives and stormy daniels and all the uh, the women who didn't accept your advances and you did it anyways it it must be torment uh, torment really for you in human history has really and i know you have supporters uh nobody in human history well, all right. Technically speaking, Jesus Christ was not human. He was a God and he was the son of God. And so therefore not really human. Anybody who can, humans can't walk on water. I'm just saying, um, uh, or survive crucifixion. So not, not a human thing per se. Um, I mean, there are people that come to mind, uh, the character in the revenant, um, friends, family, they say it's lonely at the top. And I'm actually curious, is it? <laughs> and do you need a hug? And I'd be willing to spoon you, but we have to do it in the tower at Mar-a-Lago. Dreams can come true. Ever lonely for you. I mean, no one can fully relate to what you've been through. I'm so lonely. I don't know where my friends have gone. I'm so lonely. At the top, there is no one. I'm so lonely. But thank God, Greg Kelly is here. So he can see my single tear. Oh, like a bridge over Greg Kelly. I will mar a log. Oh! All right, sorry. And what you're going through. Are you ever lonely? So I Are you ever lonely? Are you lonesome tonight? Are subpoenas of fright? Are you scared you'll be in solitary. I was, over the years, I love history. I study history. Well, I mean, Mein Kampf is technically history, so sure. And I was always told that Andrew Jackson, as a president... <laughs> you were told while you were studying... Excuse me, shut the fuck up. I'm, I'm studying history here. You know, Andrew Jackson was... was, was I got it, I got it. Excuse me. I'm trying, I'm trying to study... Um, I just, this is my freshly trained. I got that learn German where it's German on one side and English on the other, and it's all the best speeches. So could you lay off the bullshit about Andrew Jackson while I'm trying to thank you, <laughs> trying to study history? And I was always told. President was treated the absolute worst. He was just really lambasted. <laughs> I'm going to go with the guys who were assassinated, honestly. 
I, I would take a, I gotta say, I would take a good lambasting, which actually sounds a bit like a tongue bath, actually, when I say it that way, so it actually sounds positive. But it, uh, I'll take a good lambasting over being fucking shot in Dallas. You know what I mean? Like, most, most people, I think. You know, Lincoln, Garfield, Kennedy, fucking Reagan. I, Reagan had a rough first year. And I heard Abraham Lincoln was second, but he was in a thing called the Civil War. So you. Okay. He was president during the Civil War. He wasn't actually in the Civil War. You're thinking of George Washington, you fucking dipshit. You can understand that. But Andrew Jackson was really, really treated badly. <laughs> Greg's like, why'd I do it? Why the, why the fuck did I do this? Why did I? I had to ask him the question. I fucking, it's my mistake. You know, I, um, I let my heart get ahead of my brain again. Uh, I had to ask him the lonely question and fucking dog walked him right into a, right off a cliff like an asshole. I, I should have known he's incapable of, uh, answering any question with facts, much less something with emotional content. I mean, it's like, why don't you, hey, Greg, why don't you ask him what his favorite Bible verse is while you're at it? Jesus Christ, man. It's just, uh. In fact, his wife died during the process. I mean, a lot of people say she died because of the way they were treated. I mean, death by fake news. <laughs> and she was heartbroken and, and broken in so many other ways. Yeah, yeah, not just her heart was broken, like her, her feet were broken. No, that would be the women whose feet were bound um, as part of the cultural stuff that was done in China. For, so I would argue they had a pretty rough time as as people in history go the women who had their feet bound I, I mean i would put them i would say put them up on a pedestal in that regard but i would think i'd let them sit in a chair um and i heard that for years you heard that while you were studying history you heard that for years okay first of all he means while he was in the white house when someone else in his fucking cabinet, who's an awful racist, decided, you should hang a picture of Andrew Jackson. The right people will know what you mean by that. And I look now, even last night I was saying it, I said, there's no, I don't care, Andrew Jackson or anybody else, nobody has tripped, when you think of the, the fake things, nobody's. The fake things. Yeah, I guess bullets are real, so. It's been treated like Trump in terms of badly. Russia. In terms of badly. I mean, at this point, I'll tell you in terms of badly, you dumb son of a bitch. Um, in terms of badly, beg your pardon. People I don't care, Andrew Jackson or anybody else, nobody has, when you think of the, the fake things, nobody's been treated like Trump in terms of badly. Nobody's been treated like Trump in terms of badly. Can we just put that on the pile with all the things that if Biden said it, uh, Sean Hannity would do an entire fucking show about what the fuck is he talking about and how come he can't get words in order and I don't want to hear about his stutter because that's just fucking nonsense and clearly he's slipping and did somebody boil his goddamn brain? It Russia, 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 Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Everything was a scam. And... It literally starts the new one. As you win one, you start the other. Impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two. All hoaxes and scams. And I said... If well, he's, he's, always, he's often said that, I think. Um, uh, I've been involved in the two greatest scams in American history. This is true. We're going to be appointing very pro-crime judges. Uh -huh. Here I am like an idiot. Yeah, exactly. If they ever devoted their time to making America great again, it would be a lot easier. Some people say, sir, how do you get out of bed in the morning? <laughs> I think a lot of people are asking, does he? It's a war. We're fighting some very bad people, some very evil people. And it's a war. And it's a war that we're winning. You know, when I looked at the numbers last night, we had tremendous numbers. You had tremendous a tremendous other candidates are on as you know other candidates are left even if they're no longer on if they quit if they gave up or whatever form of leaving they they wanted to take what other form of leaving they wanted to take 
Anybody? Whatever form of leaving they wanted to take. Um, those numbers were incredible numbers, and the numbers of people that voted were incredible numbers. There's never been... Also, no. A, they had low turnout in a bunch of these places. He lost 60-40 in some cases to Nikki Haley. She won Vermont. She got 77,000 votes in Georgia. 20,000 on actual primary day after she had dropped out. Meaning that those people knew she had dropped out and voted for her anyway. So those are the people who are like, fuck you, I'm not voting for Donald Trump no matter what happens. And he lost Georgia by about 12,800 votes. In spirit, in my opinion, for an election of an American president like there is right now. And I think you add on the fact that they love my policies. They like me. They have to like me. They're not going to vote otherwise. But Yeah, they will. People vote for people they think can do it better, even if they don't like them. You think that you think the Republic? Well, maybe he's right. Maybe the entire Republican standard at this point is the fucking George W. Bush standard and has been forever. That's it. But they see how bad, how pathetic Biden's been. He's the worst president in the history of our country. Mm, not by a long shot. He's and by the way, according to the like the markers of you know as far as you know excess deaths in the country, um, progress moving forward on a myriad of issues. You come in dead last. Biden was. 14th corrupt he's incompetent uh he's well then it, maybe that's why he's so good he's corrupt but he's so bad at it that he's like squeaky clean weaponize the justice system to go after his political opponent which has never been done before well m only because i think Johnson took over for Nixon and pardoned him. And he's the worst president we've ever had. He's not respected at all in foreign look you wouldn't have Russia attacking Ukraine. You wouldn't have Israel being attacked. Iran was broke when I was president. They were broke. No, they weren't. Because the $6 billion, by the way, that was going to be for the um, the hostage exchange. By the way, we got those hostages. But Iran never got their $6 billion. It's still sitting in an account in a South Korean bank. You know how it got there? Because Donald Trump gave South Korea a waiver to buy Iranian oil during his presidency to lower the price. So that they could get more blood, uh, more more blood, more uh, black gold, um, more you know black blood of the earth. Is I'm, I'm having literally every uh, uh, James um, James Wong got his his uh, star, and so I've got lines from Big Trouble in Little China going through my head every day now. Um, but anyways, uh, he literally wanted the price of oil to come down, so he was allowing Iran to sell more oil so there'd be more supply. And that's where that six billion dollars came from. Because of me, let's say they were broke, and let's say they were broke. They weren't, but let's say they didn't have the money to give to Hamas or Hezbollah. Uh, all of these things, you wouldn't have inflation because it was caused by energy. All, no, it wasn't. All of these things were things that were very preventable. Uh, not. You, you're right. It, it could. This could have all been prevented if we'd have just stayed in lockdown and not vaccinated everyone and gotten our society back on track we could have avoided all this shit none of it would have happened certainly not inflation preventable by him and the problem we have we have seven months to go a little more than seven months to go hold on i um chat room one second i'm hearing someone outside the door give me one second What is it doing? What the boy? What did you do? He was outside the door. I know, you big boy. You were outside the door. What was the matter? What's the matter? What is it? What's the chipper doing? What's the buddy that doing? What's the buddy doing? All right. All right. Oh my gosh. Get the boy do it. Get the boy. Get the boy. Can you guys hear him? Okay, 
Hit your snack in a minute. I'm almost done. There's a there's a mouse toy and he's now learning to fetch because my cat is a dog. <laughs> he's not fat, he's big boned. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Um, all right, anyways, back to where we were. That's an eternity when you have incompetent people running the government. The cases against you in different ways are disintegrating. You see what's going yeah. on with Fanny. <laughs> nope. And uh, Jack Smith keeps on losing on these emotions. Yeah. These Ew. Ew! Enough with the fucking tongue jut. That was the biggest one I've ever seen. Gross. With Fanny and uh, Jack Smith keeps on losing on these emotions. Yeah. These. <laughs> Stop it! Cases were designed to destroy you. Yes, and they've helped you. And some. No, I wouldn't say they've helped them. I, I, I look at his face. Like uh, look at him right now. Do you think they really? Really, really think he helped him? Of us, actually, we see, I know my audience and me too, we see that you're protected, maybe even by the hand of God. <laughs> yes, God desperately wants Joe Biden to have a second term, so he's making sure that you actually get to run so people know what the fucking contrast is. Has that ever crossed your mind? I mean, the idea that these indictments. No. Greg. You're asking this man to give credit to someone else, even God. It, there's no fucking way this ass was like, yeah, it, I mean, this isn't about me. The Lord is what, like, what do you fucking think he's going to do? Like, a, be like a football player who just scored a touchdown and just go like, eh, like that? He's like, what? Why would I give God credit? I did this. What the fuck is wrong with you? God? I am the law. Could have been a benefit to you politically. It's almost inconce it was inconceivable a year ago. Unconceivable? Well, maybe you know. Keep trying. Maybe maybe you've got low sperm count, Greg. Now look at where you are. Well, I've watched people over the years, politicians get indicted, and the first thing they do is go to the microphone and say, "I'll be leaving office now." Yeah, those those are the people who actually uh, have some shame, or you know, actually are embarrassed by their behavior instead of thinking it's a you know. It's a feature, not a bug. And I will fight for my name and my reputation, and I'll be going back home to my family. You know, you, they leave for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, but I don't want to see my family. I, I like she. She lives in Baltimore with the kid now. I don't even change diapers. I don't, fucking kids, whatever. Like, what do you mean go back to my family? The only reason I have my family around me is because I haven't run my business because I can't trust strangers to do it. And and once I loop them in, they're fucked without me. No, but nobody's ever been hit like me. Uh, and it has never been anything like this. Look, my numbers are highest. Nobody's ever seen numbers like this. Greg, do you notice he's not giving credit to God in any way yet? Maybe he'll get around to it. Let's see. I doubt it. I believe that if I, if this didn't happen, perhaps they miscalculated and perhaps they haven't. Because don't forget, it's not over yet. Uh, but there is some kind of a protect. It's kind of over. Protective force because. You look at what I've been hit with. These are horrible people. These are corrupt. You know, Jack Smith. I call him deranged Jack Smith. This guy. It, it, notice he's saying it exactly the same way he says in the other half of the interview. We watched this all, like I feel like we watched this already and we didn't. Is out to murder. Here's Joe Biden with. Is out to murder. What? Jack Smith. This guy is out to murder. Here's Joe Biden with. No, he's fucking not. Again. This is the guy who thinks that the Joe Biden should have absolute immunity. If he did have it and Trump believes he actually has it, then Biden could send anybody he wants and snuff this dude and, and uh, never get found out until he's well out of office. And if he wasn't impeached, they couldn't even try him after he was out of office. 50 times the number of documents, classified stuff. He took it all for a 50-year period. And don't forget, they can blame his mental health. And I agree with him on his mental health. His mental health is terrible. But they can blame his mental health. But 20 years... Yeah, they don't. And first of all, no, his... It, okay, there's a big difference between documents that came from when you're in the White House and documents from your senatorial campaign. And all the stuff that was in the the stuff at his uh at Penn were his senate documents 
And even the stuff that they ended up handing back that were in boxes that came from after he was vice president, that he had pulled up that were classified from when the time he was in the Senate, that he looked at again, reviewed as part of the process and dealing with whatever issue they were dealing with. Like, you know, a lot, it might surprise people, but a lot of the issues we have in the world have been problems for a long fucking time. And so a lot of the stuff that ended up in his boxes that came from his vice presidency, where he had declassification um, uh, powers equal to the president, according to one of the first executive orders that Biden or that uh, Obama signed, um, the vice president and the president had equal powers to both uh, classify and declassify items. And any uh, department head could also do that as long as it, whatever was below them in that they were allowed to do that. That's that's because you. That's what happens when you trust your cabinet. This is like I magically took them. Anything I take with me is just declassified because if I think it can walk, it can walk. Even if I don't know, I walked with it. Even if I didn't know it was in the box and it was an accident, it's magically declassified. Which is just like again, you wouldn't let somebody who actually thinks that for real anywhere near the White House. Years ago and ten years ago and thirty years ago and forty and fifty years ago, he didn't have let's say a mental health problem like they talk about today. So they release him from liability. And you're talking about many, many times the documents over many years. And he didn't have the Presidential Records Act. He didn't have it, you know, which, which totally protects me in my opinion. Also, the, the Presidential Records Act does not protect him. It's the opposite. The Presidential Records Act was put in after Nixon because apparently Nixon thought he could hide a bunch of shit. And the Presidential Records Act said, no, motherfucker, that's not yours. It makes a very distinct line. Good Lord. I don't know why he keeps saying that. Only The only reason I can believe it is that maybe Alina Haba or one of his attorneys at some point said, you're protected by the Presidential Records Act. Look at the name. It says Presidential Records Act. It's The Presidential Records Act is about preserving records from the administration after their time in office, not allowing them to walk with whatever the fuck they want. It's the, it is precisely the opposite of his reading. And he says this all the time. It's weird. Opinion totally protects me. It doesn't. And by the way, does he say, in my opinion? Records Act, he didn't have it, you know, which, which totally protects me, in my opinion, totally. In my opinion. Well, yours doesn't matter, motherfucker. It's what the law says. Protects me. It totally protects me. I was a president and therefore presidential records or whatever the fuck I say they are. You know, I was dealing with them. We were dealing fine. We weren't. And then all of a sudden they raided this house. They raided Mar-a-Lago. They didn't raid it. They, ha they executed a lawful search warrant. These are corrupt people, but they release Biden. What Biden did, he wasn't protected by the presidential rep because he wasn't president. He took him when he was a senator. Dick Durbin got up and said, if he did that, that's a real bad thing. That's as bad as it gets. Dick Durbin's on their side. And I just remember when he heard about that, he took a lot of classified documents and documents. No, he said if Biden did what you were doing, that would be a bad thing. Meaning hiding the shit on purpose. As a senator, Dick Durbin couldn't believe it. So, No, he was literally making, if we're talking about the same clip, and I have no idea what the fuck he's referring to. But the, what Dick Durbin was talking about is if like Biden had some stuff and he turned it over immediately once they found it. And then they talked to Pence and he did the same thing. And, and they did a big review to make sure that shit wasn't in the wind. He was hiding and shuffling these fucking boxes. They just, they arrested people who weren't even in government who just work at fucking Mar-a-Lago. Those guys are either flipping or going to goddamn jail. When you look at, it, there's something going on because they're going after me viciously. Then all of a sudden it comes out that Biden took 10 times the number of documents that I no, it didn't. It did not come out that he he took 10 times the number of documents. Just gibberish. And I took them very legally, and I wasn't hiding them. Ooh, you took them very legally. Really? What, what standard would that be, dumb shit? We had boxes on the front of the, and a lot of those boxes had clothing and a lot. We're moving out, okay? Unfortunately, we're moving out of the White House. And because we're moving out of the White House, our country's going to hell. But um, we weren't hiding anything. He was. All right. First of all, this is so weird. He brings this up too. That there were they moved out and there were boxes and the boxes that were moved into the truck and everybody saw the boxes. These specific boxes. They, okay. They used a bunch of those fucking boxes for almost every. I mean, the bankers' boxes is what they used for uh, almost everything. Not all of them were full of classified shit. And the assumption was, I think, to a lot of people that didn't realize what a criminal asshole this guy was was that they, there wouldn't be, they wouldn't just over.
overtly be walking out with classified documents that he was going to fucking sell to somebody, right? The, the idea that, and you couldn't see through the boxes. The boxes weren't marked like, shit, I'm stealing to sell to Saudi Arabia so that Jared can get his fucking deal so they can get me out of this bind because I'm going to lose my fucking shirt because all my goddamn loans are coming due and I don't have any fucking money because I'm an idiot. Like, they didn't write that on the side of the box. That would have set up some red flags, I think. Was. And then you see him in with his Corvette. Nobody ever mentions the one though that's the worst is he had him in China. Chinatown. Chinatown. And those were boxes that were used. If you take a look at those boxes, those boxes were, there was a lot of activity in those boxes. They show pictures of them. These were boxes. Also, no, they don't. What, for, the reason they were used is because they were literally decades old. They were from the 70s and the 80s. They were, uh, those were older boxes. They actually make those banker boxes better now. They survive longer. The cardboard is stronger now than it was in the 80s and 70s. You should know that. One of your big donors is the fucking dude who made a shit, like a killing on, on fucking cardboard during COVID. So we used, in Mar-a-Lago, we had the Secret Service. We had all sorts of security. We had everything. And yeah, one of the everythings you had was... Uh, uh, the, a, a woman pretending to be a Rothschild who was able to walk anywhere on the fucking property anytime she wanted. You had your employees co like conspiring not only to sneak boxes out of the locked room to your office, you could go through them and then put them back after you taken shit out of them and put that shit in your desk, which was found by the FBI. You, you have, you, you know what, one of the other everythings you have? Fucking video of your employees discussing how you wanted them to erase the tapes to those cameras. You know what you also had? You also had the fucking pool guy intentionally on accident flooding the server room to try and erase it accidentally on purpose. You also had, like, anybody in the world can buy a fucking membership and all of them are 10 feet away from, from the doors where this shit was hidden and nobody ever fucking stopped them. And... What he did was far more egregious. I mean, what I did, I, I had protection. I had the right to do it, in my opinion. And, and <laughs> no, that that's the tell, in my opinion. Okay, this is where he thinks he's going to be able to use ignorance as uh, as an alibi. My lawyer's opinion and everything. Yeah, but they're idiots. But and also, it's not their opinion. If it was their opinion then they would have just made the case, and that would have been the case. Oh, uh, thank you, Peter, for the uh, super chat. By the way, don't forget to hit the like button and all that stuff. I'm sorry, I haven't been mentioning it. When you see that the way they released him, and they say, we're going to release him, it was egregious what he did. But by the way, they released Hillary Clinton. She hammered her phones. She used uh, all sorts of acid testing and everything else. That <laughs> acid testing, did she? Did, it, it, did she Woodstock her phones? Is that what she did? Acid testing? Acid to, hmm. okay. You mean acid washing, um, probably in reference to the bleach bit idea. And I, can I, can I point out, fuckwad, that all of the things you're mentioning, destroying phones like that, bleaching them, acid washing them, I don't know, fucking tie dyeing them, uh, bedazzling them, whatever the fuck they did. Um, to blinging out whatever they everything they did would have made it impossible for our enemies both foreign and domestic to get access to anything on them that might have been sensitive the destruction of those because here's the thing you didn't destroy these things you preserved them lied about having them and then hid them while you apparently if if we're if the the copy machine in the fucking room is any indication, in the storage room is any indication. You kept them and so you could make copies of everything so you could sell those copies to our enemies, both foreign and domestic. Call it uh, bleach bit, but it's essentially acid that will destroy everything, <laughs> you know. With yeah, so it'd make it really hard for our enemies to say, see it, unlike a shitty little room at a rental property that you live in like a fucking airbnb host that won't fucking leave where somebody with little cheese ball locks on the shit that i'm honestly you put a padlock on that a fucking our national security is protected by a padlock 
I, I swear to God, like every spy must have been like, okay, we got a plan. Guys, I got a picture. What? The, the room where it's stored. Okay, we, there's probably lasers that go across. There's probably temperature sensitive. We'll have to wear these suits that will lower our body temperature to the same temperature as the pool. And we'll walk really slowly. We'll have exactly 35 minutes to walk four inches. And we'll have to walk like super slow motion like break dancers. No, no, guys, guys. No, no. It's, no, you, you go down to the bottom of the steps where there's no cameras at all. You make a left. And it's a padlock. What do you mean it's a padlock? It's a, yeah, it's just like a regular padlock. You, yeah, what do you mean? I mean, we just need a bobby pin, I think, really. Oh, fuck. I, ju I just think we're going to have to change the name from Mission Impossible Force to... Uh, I don't know. Lazy Fuck Squad. I don't really feel driven anymore to even do this. It's going to be that easy. I'm all prepared to like propel down on a wire and try not to sweat on the floor that has a moisture sensor. What do you mean? Fucking a padlock? Yeah, padlock. padlock. Fuck. Padlock, Jesus Christ. What am I, a kid stealing a bike? Then 10 miles. I mean, what she did was unbelievable. Nothing happens here. Nothing happens to Bill Clinton. He took it out in his socks. You know, it was the famous socks case, which he actually ended up winning. So that was his diaries. When I look at this, Greg, I say, this I say, uh, I don't understand anything. Got to be something. You know, it was very interesting when there's, I, I, there's got to be something. Not God. Um. It must be me. I've got a certain kind of magic. It's a kind of magic. They were going after me viciously, raiding my house, everything else, because Jack Smith is an animal. He's a total animal. He's a, he's deranged in my... He <laughs> also, Greg is like, what? He, he wants to love... He, he Look at him. He wants to love him so bad. He's like, mm, don't say animal. The guy's animal. He's He worked at the fucking Hague. Just... I don't get it. Oh, yes, he's a deranged person. Uh, the other gentleman who went after her, went after Biden, it was a weird kind of a conclusion because he said, you know, he's competent to be president. Went after her, went after Biden. You mean her who went after Biden? It wasn't, Biden doesn't have, doesn't, isn't a she, her, I'm just saying. But he's not competent to stand trial. That's sort of a strange thing. I don't think people are going to buy that very much because certainly it'll be used during the campaign. Very curious. You, um, you're a tough person. <laughs> like they're, he, he's just admitting he's going to use that during the campaign, which is what people were talking about. Like that, basically, her was trying to benefit Trump by dirtying things up in like a Comey. There's, there might be more to the Hillary email thing. Like he's hoping that the her statement can be something they can use. It's not going to fuck. And obviously, but uh, you this is dead in the water. You have experienced loss like anybody else. Yeah. You lost your brother over the past couple of years. Your sister the past couple of years hold on when did fucking fred trump die like his brother oh hold on uh yeah hold on whoops why is this I don't want to support you. Go ahead. Um, Fred Trump Jr.'s battle with alcoholism led to his untimely death. Died in 1981. Your uh, late wife, Ivana. How do you grieve? Because you were like right back at work. You had to be. <laughs> How did you grieve? He buried her on a golf course. Oh, he's talking about Robert dying? Yeah. Well, he meant, wait, hold on. Let's, let's, uh, 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 let's hear the whole exchange real quick. You lost your brother over the past couple of years, your sister, your uh, late wife, Ivana. How do you grieve? Because you were like, right. Your late ex-wife also again. And his sister and he were on the outs when that happened. Back at work. You had to be. And I, I, I just get the feeling that, that I just want you to tell me that if I died like that, you, you would miss me. And, um, 
And maybe if you miss me, promise not to bury me like in a water trap or a or a sand pit. Just at least put me near where I have a nice view of Bedminster. It's hard to conceive somebody like you shedding tears. And I'm curious as, did it happen then? Has it happened? So I don't like to do it. I, I, <laughs> I do. I'm a big fan. We all love crying, especially when it's because someone died. Um, you know, I, like that's, I think it's, I don't like to do it. Asshole. It's not, a, that's not about whether you like to or not. It's about whether you're, you can, or, right. Amy Tavy is, it, he's fucking incapable. He doesn't care. I don't like to care about people. Um, good Lord. You guys have seen me cry on the air multiple times. I'm good. And I don't like to do it. I do it because it's a natural expression when it happens. I'm not afraid to do it is the key. I think that's what this is really. What he means is, I'm afraid to do it. If anybody sees me crying, that means weakness. That means women cry. Men who cry are like women. Women are weak and therefore. It's like this, it's, it's misogyny essentially is what keeps this asshole from being able to cry. I, you know, it's, when you lose somebody, it's very tough. I lost my mother-in-law very recently. She was a great woman. She was very a beautiful woman inside and out. And she died. And I will tell you, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing. I don't like to show that. I don't <laughs> like to see it. But you have. A lot of people, no, sure you do. I mean, you do when you lose somebody that you really love. Uh, my sister, my brother, uh, when you lose your parents. It's a very tough thing, and I find nothing wrong with it. But I don't like I don't like to do it in public. Now I have to tell you something. I don't. Sometimes uh, I don't think you can really help it, uh, and that's okay. Right. <laughs> that's like literally. He's looking for an excuse for the few times where he does cry. He's like, I don't think you can stop from crying. Sometimes it just happens. I don't get it. Don't. I mean, you can't blame me. It They did it to me. They're the ones that died. Okay, too. I think that's okay, too. But grieving is grieving. When you lose somebody that's very close, in many ways, if if you don't grieve, uh, perhaps you're not such a good person. Right, but he wasn't asking you about grieving. He was asking about crying, which you are, uh, uh, again, gibberish. Can I just say that I was right about the whole there was no God answer at all? I don't know that there was a single question, maybe, maybe the one about attitude, like how, his behavior was the only one where he actually seemed to really address Greg's question, right? The The rest of it, I, I got to say, the, the rest of it seems to be like he just went off somewhere weird, but he certainly was, you know, he was not able to answer the question. Again, and, I, and the reason Greg Kelly asked that, I think, largely is because Biden's biggest weapon that he has is his empathy. And especially after something like COVID, when people are dealing with death in a more acute way than they might have otherwise. You got a million more, you know, people pass away, pass away. That means you got family members around them who are dealing with death that they weren't expecting or that happened, at, you know, at, along with all the other naturally occurring death that happens in their lives or they may have been expecting this thing comes in and it and sweeps their legs out from under them so of course there's a you know there are a lot of people who are hurting or dealing with this in a more acute way than they ever have been and so biden has that ability because he's been through it in in a really terrible way both with Bo and his uh his first wife and his daughter and the and just the fear of the injuries that had happened to both of his boys when that car accident happened and, and then, you know, coming back on the train uh, to tuck them in at night all the time, like making that trip from D.C. to Delaware all the time to be with his sons because they'd lost their mother and their sister and they'd been through this stuff, right? That in and of itself is, you know, is one of the things that I saw somebody, they were talking about um, like why people in certain voter districts are, are sticking with Biden this time around. And they were talking to this uh, 
this black dude who had a um a barber shop i think it was in georgia and they're like what you know what's it going to be that what's it about biden that keeps you with him he goes well i think he really cares about regular people i think that's the stark difference between him and trump was that he really does care about av- the average person and that's what that's one of the reasons why is cuz he you know his life the tragedy he's had in his life he's able to express and he and he's close to it and he's not afraid of being close to it he's not afraid of tearing up about it he's not afraid of, of you know of his voice breaking during a conversation he's not it doesn't scare him trump is scared of it that that and and that means he's only interested in the approval and attention of people who think crying or emoting or grieving is a weakness other than some sort of like fucking hallmark card you know you got to grieve it grieving's happening is grieving is gonna i guess sometimes you can't help but cry uh but grieving is something that you gotta if you don't grieve you know maybe you don't aren't the kind of person that uh is good like like this shitty like first run at, at like a guy who immediately was fired from a a, 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 a compassion card company like, dude, I, you got to get the fuck out of here. We, first of all, it's way too wordy. And secondly, uh, we all think you're awful. I don't know what that smell is, but Jesus. Biden was with a stuttering kid today in Milwaukee. Great watch, real president. Yeah, I, I thought it was lovely. Um, well, uh, thank you guys uh, for being with me for this uh, episode. We had other things to cover, but I ate up a ton of time. I went long again. Um can I just show you one title that I thought was funny and then I'll move on? Um, this is this is probably got to be the most hilarious and stupid title that any of these folks have ever made. Um, it's right up there. Why was the CIA at the Capitol on January 6th? <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Why is there a police department down downtown? What? Why was the CIA at the Capitol on January? Because they're there all the time. Because they they're in constant contact with both the Capitol Police and the FBI about foreign threats against members of Congress, especially the day they're counting the fucking votes. Because if I can. The, the people at the hotel that were talking to Mark Meadows in the White House to coordinate the violence on January 6th were also talking to people who were fucking overseas and the CIA was picking up that talk? Gee, I can't fucking imagine. Mm. Chip, please, before you go to make it all better. I brought him out here. I did. Hold on. I don't know if he's still out here. Chip, please. grab Maddie because she was on her way to use the bathroom, but you never pick up a cat when they have to go poo because it's very difficult to live like that. You have to poo. Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? He's a good boy. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's a boy. It's a, such a good boy. Oh, he's such a good boy. You okay? Hmm? You all right? Um, well, Chip says goodnight. Say goodnight, Chip. I don't know. All right. Um, and I'll see you guys whew, for the morning show. Regular times tomorrow. Woof. Um, love you guys. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for liking and subscribing and sharing the show and all this stuff. Our numbers continue to climb. Clearly, um, we're benefiting from my um, mercenary click baiting by going after the, the super, like, uber... Trump slash Taylor slash uh, royal family level, you know, like click garnerers, um, like Carol Roth and and fucking Glenn Beck. You have a lot of shedding. Um, by the way, uh, Saturday night Vegas, uh, Virgin Casino, um, Nerd Halen. Just saying. Also, uh, sexyliberal.com for tickets for the show. I do indeed have a, uh, if you'll notice, 
Um, there's a little sign up here all the time. Sexy Liberal Save the World Tour is, we're heading out there. Get your tickets now. There's meet and gropes. There's, uh, I'm going to try and schedule some, uh, some Nerd Halen shows in and around and beside these so that the night before or the night after people can, uh, you know, since I'm already there, I can save my band some money by not having to fly me someplace and, and balance it all out. Yeah. So fingers crossed. Uh, oh, Matt, Mo Mad and you, I'll see you in Boston. Awesome. Uh, Water Goddess has her tickets. Uh, fantastic. Um, hold on. Um, see, see in Burke. Nice. I'll put an astronaut outside your window. Okay. I can have a guy float by. All right. I can make that happen. You just wait. Yeah. Um, but Nerd Halen uh, is uh, Saturday night. It's going to be very exciting. It's sort of our audition for the Virgin Casino folks. Hopefully we'll get some uh, some gigs out of it. That and we, and we get. I'd like to get a residency there. You know, a couple times a month maybe. It's, I'm, it's all I ask. Well, it's not all I ask. It's all I ask at first. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So, um, LA in November, excellent. Yeah, I'm totally a hack, Robin. Uh, feel free to call me out. I, I no no Seattle or St. Louis was the STL. Um, we're definitely doing Seattle. We're coming we're going to portland as well um st louis is i believe on the list there too so yeah come back to yamaba okay we'll do that at some point it's real the, the sound there is weird i would rather do the bigger room we'll get there eventually um but uh in the meantime uh see you guys yes hashtag rip portland um tomorrow um what's our uh, andrea what's our guest tomorrow um who do we have on on friday while i'm at it it's just carol roth and me for two hours <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? If we try to get Carol to come on and we could just argue this shit. And again, I I I will take back the word dimwit if it upset her, but what that word stands for, I I stand by. And this okay. Um yes. That's our new show, uh Carol Roth and the Twat. Together again. Yes, together we fall in love and fight crime. <laughs> Boston Brian, I don't know. I'd like uh uh can we throw it in the staff chat, Andrea? Um just to make sure. Oh. Oh, Karen Byrne, Karen from Chicago from Steph Show and Anita uh from the True Blue Politics. They're gonna be second hour tomorrow. Excellent. That's great. Okay. So uh Karen from Chicago and Anita from uh True Blue Politics will be on the second hour tomorrow. And the first hour is just you and me. And uh apparently uh we'll see if we can like uh, meta this entire thing where we fold the I my her response to my critique of her response into her critique of m my response and just on and on till it stacks and turns into a fractal. There's gonna be a one day there will be a political economic uh, politically economic fractal that's made out of this the number of times where we uh, Carol Roth and I just spiral into these things yeah we'll fold space and times all right i love you guys see you tomorrow take care of yourself and take care of somebody else um and remember uh whatever you do stay away from the kidney So you want to